going? And Jimmy Yi, welcome to the podcast, man. Um, started following you a few months ago, and I was blown away by the content that you put out. Just because um, I, I myself, with a bunch of other people, are sort of like in that same mindset of like growth, mental growth, like keep trying to progress yourself. So where for you does that come from, and where did it all start? Great question. Thanks for having me. Uh, I was 21, starting my dorm room. I started a business. Yeah, just pull the mic to in front of in front of you instead of on top. There you go. Yeah. So I was 21, um, bump into a business opportunity. Um, it got started, and then the self development started within that program because I, I bumped into my mentors. What was the What was the business? It was direct sales. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, you international. I still run it today. And uh, the, the self development that they had available to us, and that's where it started with the books and the mind and the mindset and the growth, and I and that's where it started, and I continue to start, continue to s keep learning about stuff. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Conferences, books, audio, CDs. So you've been doing this for that long, just yeah. sort of yeah, just yeah, going, going, and just uh, filling your cup. Yeah, so filling to speak, your cup. Right? Yeah, and continue to filling your cup because uh, the continued journey, because education never stops. And it's funny how most people always stop at a certain point at a certain age or when they graduate from college, they go, okay, I'm done learning. Um, I always learned the day you stop learning is the day you stop growing. And that's when it started, 21, yeah, 14 years ago. And I'm still reading and I'm still listening to audio and I'm still just crass because it, things change in the last 10 oh, years. Yeah, so that's rapidly. Why, yeah, it's, almost, very, like, very it's rapid. almost like within like within five years, things can completely yeah. just change. Change. Either for you or in the world. <laughs> uh, both. <laughs> like, look, like, look, we're open. North Korea is bringing down the wall. You, yeah, know? Totally. Like <laughs> you know, and just even the recent companies, Airbnb wasn't around five years right, ago. Right. Or Uber. Uber wasn't around five years ago. Or mm -hmm. in the Philippines mm -hmm. or the Asia side, Grab wasn't around five years ago. So we have to, uh, we have to keep learning. Yeah, yeah. So wh where do you think it's like, at least Guam, uh, entrepreneurial it seems more people are getting into it a lot more younger people are getting into it it was something that i was never taught definitely when i was going to school especially middle school and high school it's like i hope you're ready for college you know? <laughs> yeah i agree but but now college ain't exactly the best option um if 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 you're willing to work hard Yes. There no? are more Can options. You, there okay, are more okay, options okay. today. Absolutely. There are more options. Is it the only option? Absolutely not. Uh, yeah, a lot of more young kids are becoming entrepreneurs because just what they have access to today, especially with the internet and what they see. Yeah. And so a lot of young guys want to be that entrepreneur, but they don't see the back end of it, of the process, of the hard work. You have to put the sweat, the e sweat equity, they call it. Yeah. So they don't see that. Squackity. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> But um, <laughs> entrepreneur is the way, you know, it's great. Um, it's not for everybody. Can everyone do it? Absolutely. But will everyone do it? No. Yeah. And I think I think most people give up is the first sign of defeat or the first sign of that sort of trophy ending in entering into a I'll even I'll, I'll take a step back from that. OK, just the first step most folks can't take because mm. the belief in themselves. Right, right. Just the belief in people. Most people won't do it. Why do you think that is? It's a mindset, uh, depending on how you're raised, what kind of environment you grew up on, uh, where you told that, yes, you can do things, or where you told, no, you can't do things. So it's a mindset. It's a belief thing. It depends on the type of environment you come in and how you're, and the school education tells us, no, don't do that. Right. So we have that belief where it's like, man, can I really do this? Right. And that's the hardest gap. <clears throat> yeah, man. Uh, the educational system, right? Uh we want to say that it probably does need to change because it was it was structured for man i've said this plenty of times on the podcast like it was structured for the assembly line for workers yes. for people to grow up and go to work during the industrial revolution happened and they're like okay we need to start a system correct to get people in line with each other nothing wrong with school yeah um i, I definitely yeah i'm i'm a i'm no. a grad college graduate myself so same, same here yeah i tell kids today that do want to go to college because I, I, I always get that question um should i go to college i said it depends you know, <laughs> do, you do you have to go to a that couldn't a, be any, <laughs> any more open-ended yeah, do you have to go to a school that's fifty thousand dollars a year and i mean don't get me wrong if you want to be a doctor or a, or a specific profession right, then right, yes right, right. but if you're not sure yeah. Is it really worth to borrow that much money? No. 
Yeah. You know, there's other like, ways. Um, hmm. What's a? I don't want to start throwing out majors. Start offending. Right, people. right, 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 right. <laughs> so there's other options. I mean, but when I what I tell these young kids today is, well, if you do go to school, network, right, meet everybody and anybody. We get too accustomed to just meeting certain people, and we stick with that certain people. But if you're going to college, you got to meet everybody. I don't care what the race is, their religion is. Just meet. You just never know who you'll bump into. Yeah, man. When I first went to college, my first couple years, I stuck with the Guam people. There you, you know? go. And that's that. I was in. Not that I got tired of them. Um, I felt myself not progressing. Not oh, man. I love all you guys. You know, no, wrong I, word. I, yeah, I love you. Guys. <laughs> I just felt. I just felt like um, I could have. I could. I could. I can expand sort of the people that I know to sort of help me find the growth that I'm looking for. Right. Because, yeah, you spend your time around certain amount of people or, you know, people in uh, you, you spend your time, you spend enough time with people. You start to become like the people that you hang out with. Yes. Right. And Charlie, Charlie Tripp and the Stones. Right. Yeah. And if it's hanging out every single night of the week for for a long time, then that's all you're going to do. That's all you're going to be. Yep. Yeah. Those are surroundings. Charlie mm-hmm. Tremendous Jones, uh, Jones said it. Who you will be five years from now are the people you hang around with and the books you read. I'm always say it when I do different talks. There's a saying, show you be your friends and I'll show you your future. Because it's just all about surroundings. So when you go back to that first topic, you're talking about belief. If you have friends in your environment, the belief is not there, then you won't have it. But if you stretch yourself and get a new circle of friends that who are like the visionaries, who are the ones that wants to take the risk, and you're in that environment, <clears throat> you're more than likely to take more risk. Yeah, man. You know, that's why I'm really glad I found this podcast, um, just because it allows me to surround myself with different kinds of people who are trying to improve this place. Absolutely. Uh, I've never felt more like I was meant to live my life to improve what's going on here than be anywhere else in this world. It's stuff. weird. It's crazy, and yeah. it's uh, it only happened like in the last like couple of years. <laughs> oh, good for you, man. Good for I, you. Yeah. I Next thing you're gonna do is gonna write a book. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know about that. And um, yeah, for five years, I was when I first moved back, I was like, mm, I'm gonna work and then I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna right. leave. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. And uh, ever since I started doing this, it's like, holy shit. There's there's literally something happening mm-hmm. on Guam right now as we speak. We can't see it. Because everybody's in their sheds and in their not basements, but in their rooms, tinkering around with the things that they're passionate about, and the possibility of it becoming a reality that they can live off of is even bigger than it was when I graduated from high school. Mm-hmm. What, thirteen years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Times change. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um. Yeah, I don't I don't know where where I was going with that thought, but uh entrepreneurship, bro. Where where is it at? Where is it at now on Guam? As you see it, as you've been going, did you spend all of your time here being an op- entrepreneur or were you in the states? Both. Both. I was in the states too, uh, but here pretty much uh, all through years and yeah, I still work during the day, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, but entrepreneur it's the opportunities are there everywhere. I always tell it to people. There's opportunities everywhere. However, you just got to be prepared for it. But most folks are not prepared for it when an opportunity comes. Because they're looking for it or is because that they're not ready? They're not ready for it. Oh. So, but they want the opportunity, but they're not ready for it. But most folks don't want to get ready. But if you're seeking the opportunity, then you're ready, right? Sneaky, <coughs> sinking and being ready is two different things. <laughs> okay, okay. Like everyone wants to make a million dollars. However, they're not going to really, do they really want to work for it? So it's just like education, like the word we're talking about in the beginning is like mm-hmm. just learning. A lot of folks don't want to learn until the opportunity gets there, but it's I too see. late. It's too I late see. to learn. I see. You, it's too late to learn then because it's like asking, asking for fire. If you don't have the wood in the spot, you ain't going to get no fire. So people are just waiting for the fire, but there's no wood in it. Yeah. So people want opportunities and there's uh, there's tons just in our island there's there's opportunities everywhere. But most folks are not ready for it. Because they're not ed- they're not educating <coughs> themselves, they're not getting their notes down, they're whatever. Man, I believe you, man. I I believe Guam is an open market. Yes. of opportunity. <laughs> it's ridiculous. If yeah. you want it, if you literally want to do something, 
you can because chances are maybe there's only a few of you doing it Mm -hmm. and it's better than trying to be somebody out in the states where there's thousands true of people doing the same thing you're doing in one locale right right there's opportunities everywhere but people just if you lazy people can't you ain't gonna do that you know we we got a lot of lazy people man Okay. Or we got we got this entitlement mentality. Hmm. Uh, this generation is very. They have this. Entitlement Which generation? Mentality. Because let's go generation Y. Okay. Y and Z. Okay. Eventually. <laughs> um, yeah, because it's just it's just the way things change. You know, you know when you give out fourth plate trophies. Yeah. Well, something's wrong. You know, it's just entitlement. It's, it's gonna. Well, it's gonna society's hurt. become sensitive. Right? Yeah, very very sensitive. Which is fine in a way. However, you got to work for it because. Um, I know, like Gary Vanderchuk. I don't know if you know him. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm like assuming. Gary yeah. <laughs> he always says the real road. They don't care about your feelings. You know, can you produce? Can you can you get to work? Can yeah. you produce the results? That's all that matters. <clears throat> yeah. So far, my favorite quote from Gary V is, um, "Don't run the sprint, run mm. the marathon." Exactly. But most people want to do the sprint, and they want the million dollars yesterday, and it's never going to happen. Yeah. So it's, it's just like you're, you're you're doing this podcast. Great three year process. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah, it didn't hope it happen overnight. <laughs> but most folks today they see that, and I still ain't a millionaire. <laughs> Where's my million dollars? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? So it's a process. It's uh, everything, and it, well, everything's a process. But most folks today just want the end result. They yeah. see the glamour. They see the lifestyle on Instagram and Twitter and all this <laughs> stuff. But they never saw the back end. So even in your case, they see all this awesome. But just like earlier when we were having a conversation, it sat for 10 months. Yeah. No one saw that. Nobody Besides saw Besides you and a couple of guys. <laughs> you know, it's no. like bubbling in <laughs> my know? brain. No one. <laughs> so can someone really <clears throat> go through that? So yeah. the fact that you went overcame that, that's big. Yeah, man. Um, I think it takes, like you said earlier, it takes the people around you that you're surrounding yourself with. If if the people you're surrounding yourself with aren't encouraging you to to fight for your dreams and fight for your passion then you'll never fight for it. Yep. If you And if you surround yourself with people who are constantly negative and always putting you down or always laughing or teasing you for the things that you do. Get new friends. Get new fucking friends, dude. Yep. <laughs> it's okay to have more friends, you know, outside your close friends. Right? Uh-huh. So. But it's, um, it's definitely the, the most, um, the best journey I've ever been on. Good. Yeah. You still have a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's just started. Just literally started. just started. And uh it's it's it makes me hopeful. Makes me hopeful for um just what wow, I'm I'm like opening myself. What did you do to me? I didn't Jimmy? do nothing, man. I'm like opening myself up to I, man, I never opened myself up to anybody. <laughs> As you rewatch this, you'll you probably be like, Oh, there it was. And then you'll be able to figure That out. was the moment. Yep. It was when Jimmy Yee came on the podcast <laughs> and we started talking. Yeah, man. Um it's 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 been it's been incredible. Just just incredible. I'm excited to see what what it's what it's gonna allow me. I found it late in my twenties too. Right. So I had done bullshitted in the first from my 20 from 22 to 27 and um, played music, mm-hmm. you know, just did the whole being on Guam in your 20s. Right. Yeah. Going out to the bars every night, going to the clubs, going and the same meeting people. people. Every day. Yeah, dude. And um, you kind of when you're able to break away from that sort of lifestyle that guam draws you Mm -hmm. automatically draws you into when you get here whether you're a new person or you just moved back you will get sucked the fuck back into that sort of scene that guam is provides for everybody freely (laughs) it's good and bad good good and bad yeah but you can get stuck in it it's almost like um what's that greek god dionysus uh, oh, where no. they You're where than me. yeah I think <laughs> I think it's a uh, Dionysus if you guys can confirm that the so it's they attract you with the lotus flower to keep you in a place uh, and you you're in there you're you're there longer than you uh, than you than you think you really are yeah. and maybe you can spend all your years being just doing the same thing. So it's time for change. It was time for change. Cool. That was it. Next for topic. For me. Yeah. And I don't want to keep uh, 
We're gonna keep talking. No, about change is good. Here, no, Jimmy. it's all right. That's I don't know. We just opened up. I haven't done a podcast in two weeks, dude. So I'm Maybe just that's like, why. I'm like pumped. That's right. That's right. It's all right, man. We're pumped up. <laughs> got to be excited about something. You know, someone's got to be excited. That's why yeah. we're alive. Yeah. You know? Um, life coach, dude. I wanna I wanna know what what drove you to become one because I thought. Is, are you like a certified life coach or is something that you kind of self not certified but qualified <laughs> there's a big difference a <laughs> uh, huge difference there yeah. but uh, yeah life coach in general because i've always been a a mentee from with many years and i still am you know because you always got to be a mentee before you become a mentor and while you're still a mentor you're still a mentee you know and uh, do you have any key mentors that you yeah back in the states okay. i still talk to even whether it's once a month or every other month and yeah yeah absolutely have to i think everybody and that's the everyone, every human being needs a mentor. Because if we look at all the success in the world, whether it's Mark Zuckerberg or whoever, Jack Ma, Bill Gates, they all have mentors. Tiger Woods has a mentor, <clears throat> uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe. Are you, are you talking about direct mentors or just people who that, who can influence and inspire you? Both, but if you have a direct mentor, that's even better. But most of all these successful people all do have direct mentors so if, if these guys have mentors why don't we have any so should i be so should i be fearful of my success because i don't have a mentor <laughs> no no you shouldn't be don't be fearful but yeah, right, maybe right. to get to that next level right the level that you have not seen or maybe you want to get to maybe you need to shoot out to gary v yeah so do you think that a mentor is necessarily someone who's older than you not yeah. at all okay not at all okay. no because uh not at all could be a younger guy absolutely it doesn't have to be someone old it's experience yeah. not age right right age has nothing to do with anything it, just, it has to be about the experience and the wisdom um and nothing with age because there's a lot of young guys out there that have a lot of wisdom yeah but older folks won't, won't listen to it and especially dudes right we have this something called ego okay <laughs> ego ego okay. Is that <laughs> i ego? call it edgy god out <laughs> um yeah we get caught up so you have to have a mentor man everybody you know all these successful people have mentors and they're successful already and they still have a mentor so mentorship's big it's, and it's a new <coughs> thing it's a big thing coming out yeah man it's crazy even through even with my daytime career um i never really exactly had somebody mentor me i've had supervisors i've had leaders but not like somebody who was like yeah yeah you know just do this do that do this this is this this will be good for you this this will help you right dude Honestly, yeah. that's why I'm, lo I'm looking at you like, no, nah, that's why I'm freaking out when you're saying, you know, everybody needs we a all mentor. Need There's a huge difference between a mentor and a supervisor and a manager. Of course. Later. Yeah. Big right. difference. But uh, yeah. So I think we all need one. Every single one of us. I don't care what age you are or how much money you make or how much money you don't make. You need to find somebody. Brian, you better get that experience, bro. I need a mentor. <laughs> Stat. Because <laughs> you know? someone you has hear. to guide you. Someone has to, go someone has to gone through what we have gone through already. And they're the ones that will guide us because it makes no sense for us to go through struggles that others have gone through again. Now that's just yeah, reinventing the wheel. Right? right. So just mentorship. Yeah. Life coach and stuff like that. It's just mentor, man. It's a mentorship is a big thing happening around the world, actually. Yeah. And people are working at it and looking at it and people know. But we just sometimes we get caught up like I don't need to listen to anybody. Hmm. I'm, I'm 40 years old. Why do I need to listen to you? And then we wonder why you make the money you make. <laughs> <laughs> but is it is it really all about money? No, not at all. Okay, absolutely not. And then what what are the other factors when it comes to I said I guess, I guess sort of growth out of uh, out of out of entrepreneurship and more into growth, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if someone tells you if someone tells you they're they're doing something for money, they won't last long because hmm. it's about the process. Right, uh, it's about the process. Um, the money will come eventually, but if you're chasing money, you'll be chasing forever. Because there are tons of, I personally believe there's tons of money out in the world today for every single human being. There's tons. You just got to go out and get it. But there's different ways to get it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look at all these successful guys, oh man, they have like so much money. Why can't they share it with the world? If he shares it with the world, you won't know what to do with it. And it's going to go back to, and you'll probably end up worse than you are before. So it's a mindset. Right. It's a mindset. A lot of people want the money, man. It's just a mindset. <laughs> Did you hear that uh, Finland ended their their universal their universal basic income experiment because it it made people the people who are under the experiment um they stopped being creative mm. and they stopped being innovators no i didn't hear it but yeah wow so over the last year that that's what they've been doing was uh was giving 
I think 800 people universal basic income. Really? Yeah, where they receive like a thousand bucks a month and literally people just chilled. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. And it does and and that just ties in. I only brought that up because that just ties in with growth. Right. You know, you start giving people and you stop get you start giving people things and you stop letting them fight for things not literally fight but right mental mental a mental fight. fight um they will stop growing yeah absolutely it's all about growth literally literally stop growing growth <clears throat> you got to grow a lot of people don't want to grow they think they know everything yeah how have, they, how have you seen yourself grow um over the last 14 years as someone who's owned their own business and been a mentor to people and a mentee Nah, uh, man it's crazy been through a lot man struggles been there um losing give us the long version long version <laughs> whatever <laughs> takes too long um I, be, I i remember driving 16 hours in one day to do a meeting and nothing happened eight hours one way eight hours back um, i've lost money i've lost hundreds of monies um yeah I've, I've i purchased plane tickets and went to meetings nothing happened uh, that was all personal money Nothing happened. Uh, not too many things could sh shake me anymore. It's like nothing. And then being in Guam is like you don't have to drive long. You know, nothing's shaking me. Someone's. I've been told no, man, many, many times. Mm. Probably in the thousands by now. You know, and it doesn't shake me. If someone says no to me, it's like okay, cool. So basically, your growth is just growing thick skin. Yeah, it's mental growth, which a lot of people don't have, because again, it comes back to the EQ and the IQ. Everyone has yeah. great. A lot of people have great IQ. Okay, especially mm. like you, for example, you mm. have a great IQ. Oh, thank, thank not not I. Okay, I was like a 2.5. I, I don't you know? even know. I, I think my IQ is pretty. My so. GPA was really low. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, it's just the emotional. It's just the emotional IQ that is just the EQ that's not one is not taught in school, and it's just handling pressure and just handling the um, failures. Empathy, having empathy, right? Yeah, that too. So it just it's just been nothing shakes me, man. It's 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 hard. It's hard for something if something goes bad in business. If something fails, it's like okay, cool, next. But the, how does that sort of affect your empathy then if you're if you're thick skinned like that to where nothing sort of phases you if in maybe an issue or a problem? Good question. Rephrase your question. Now. <laughs> that's that's the best I can do it. You know, it's, <laughs> um, it's because because it can affect business if you're too hard. Right. If you're too thick skinned and too and things don't really can can't get through to you because you're sort of like I've been through that shit. You can't you can't phase me with that bullshit no more. You know? And uh -huh. so how does it how does it sort of affect the other side, the emotional side of being thick skinned, right? Because you can't be being thick skinned doesn't make you emotional. Right, okay, I got you. Right, right. You okay. can't show your emotions. Right. Uh, one of my mentors always stoic, said, being stoic, right? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Once you become a leader, you lose the right to lo show your emotions. Hmm. Um, so when you do get, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. There's empathetic leaders, though. Yeah. Uh, 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 Nelson Mandela. Yes. Oprah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong. There are moments. Free card for everyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, some of those cards got returned. Yeah, yeah. And uh, taxed up the ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it was just a show. Right, right, right. But it's just leadership, man. Uh, huge difference between management and leadership right you know and just leaders leaders lead by example period there's nothing else to it and I always like I always learn you can't show your emotions especially the negative ones the positive ones absolutely okay yeah, excitement right. show that but like the negative emotions Cause there's some people out there you literally approach them they're like nope no yeah I mean today no yeah. hmm? can't show that <laughs> you know and, it's, and it hurts because you have to learn how to control most people today don't know how to control their emotions they react to everything. Yeah, reactionary society, man. Yeah, you gotta, and that separates the that separates that two percenter. Yeah, I agree with you. I told I totally agree with you. Um, just, just if you're if you're constantly reacting to everything to anything, then you're not really trying to improve anything. Right. You're just supporting yeah. everything. So just some growth, and back to growth, man. Just that's why we gotta grow. That's why we gotta continue to read, cause life is gonna come at us for the rest of our life. Right. We're going to hit potholes. We're going to hit stuff. Something's mm. going to happen down the road unexpectedly. Mm. And you have to be able to handle it. Yeah. It's going to come. There's, there's, if someone tells me, man, life is great. Yeah. Okay. Something's, something's wrong. <laughs> there's something going to happen. Either at the moment, you might be great, yeah. but something down the road next year, next month, two yeah. years, and anything. 
you know, someone could pass away. Yeah, I don't wish it upon you, but it's about right. to suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen, man. And that's everyone. That's everyone's <clears throat> life, everyone's business, personally, even business, up and down. You have to be able to handle the downs. Right. And most folks can't. Yeah. Um, especially new entrepreneurs. Especially if, you, if you're if you always on that sort of same level all the time without changing levels. Mm. Right? You kind of don't know what it's like to be experienced that sort of level. Okay, yeah, yeah. I get where you're going at. Got to be up and down, man. If yeah. someone tells me, man, everything went smooth, my business was great from the start to the end, and man, it's awesome. I'm like, okay, you won't last long. <laughs> you must have been a trust fund, baby. <laughs> 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 they don't last long either because <laughs> they never experienced failure. Yeah, I think was it was it Gary Vee feels bad for his kids. Yeah, yeah. If you hear if you yeah, but he always says I don't care if you come from Silicon Valley or you come from the hood, you could do it. Yeah, everyone's given that same yeah. opportunity. Yeah, everyone's given the same opportunity. You, yeah. you could do it. It doesn't matter where you come from. Do you th- to what extent does a person need to be helped though? Right, because you can lead the horse to the water. Yeah, well, but okay. it's up to them to drink it, yep. right? And up to that point, there you just answer your own <laughs> okay, question. Right, yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, there you go. That's good. No, that's good. And no, it's true because you could leave. There's so many people on island where I've helped and I've I've led them, and that's it. I can't go no more. Now it's up to them. When do you know? Does it depend on the situation? Okay, let's depend on the pr- depends on the relationship and the person. That, yes, in the can situation. we just take sort of an example of? You don't have to say like a name, yeah. but just a general example of of when you you knew in a particular situation that it was the end of the road for you and it's like well here's the stick and you can't you, you can't do it, uh, right? you just know uh, it's one okay. of those things um you just see it and of course experience right dealing with people left and right because it's all about personality base and you just know you just see it you, I could is it is it a is it more like a the men the the apprentice becomes the teacher and the butt heads the heads begin to sort of challenge thought and idea no not that no not like oh, that okay, it's just, okay. it's just, it's just, they just don't want to go to that next level like they just pause like, and you'll see it like, you, you can't you can't say when so it's not necessarily a point in the journey it's really like when you see that they're not willing to do to go 100 with you right you just know. okay you'll okay. just see it there's nothing negative right. it's just that that's where they're comfortable at well. Sort of negative, yeah. but uh, <laughs> right. not negative, <laughs> negative, but yeah. Uh, so you just know, man, because it's just because it's outside the comfort zone. Man. Yeah, it's I've outside. never, I've never been a mentor myself or a Sorry. leader. I've never been in sort of any like societies or anything like. Welcome that. to the club. You already <laughs> are. Whether or not, and and it's crazy, <laughs> and I tell all these young guys today, yeah, especially with IG and Twitter, be careful what you put on it. Yeah, for sure. I teach them because, like you just told me earlier, you get exposed. Yeah. Gary V said it the best. Social media will expose you. Yeah, it didn't change people. It just exposed exactly. who they really were. And it, it exposes. And I tell these young guys, like, be careful what you put on it. Because I see it. I see all of y'all. <laughs> I see you. How many people okay. you got there watching? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know how to work this thing, really. Okay? Um, it's crazy. It's it's be careful what you... Because it's, it's, it's like people watch. People look at it. And that's your life. Whatever you put on your social media... That's what people want to see. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we live in this world. Uh, you're not supposed to judge someone by the cover. But, hell, that's the cover. You know? So, be careful. I see some things. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know? It's, it's very, very. It's just so. If, as yeah. You social media is the book cover. Yeah. Right? So you got to be very careful. I see people doing some stuff. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? It's content. You got to be careful what you put on it. Yeah. And we have, like, kids that want to be. And the internet is forever. Yeah. Absolutely. So, even with you, what you're doing, man, it's content. But you, it's your, your Instagram. You know, people see that, like, oh, this is what he does. Well, awesome. But yeah. if they see something awkward or weird, that's it. It's done. Yeah. It's done. So you got to be very careful, man. And it's just, it's crazy. Some of these guys just, and so there, there's even folks that <coughs> don't put anything on, right? Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? How have you seen it change from being, so what year was it when you were 21? Around 2004, 2005? For? 2004? That was 2004. Okay. Yeah. So how have you seen it change as far as? As far as marketing yourself as an entrepreneur, oh I man, mean, we didn't have the, didn't ease, have the this. ease of this. Yeah, the right, iPhone right, wasn't right. even existed in right. two thousand. So I just want to know, know, like, what you had to go through. Oh, like good and bad. <laughs> good and bad. <laughs> before, before all of this, it was there was nothing. So we had the Razor flip phone, right? If you remember those days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and the text message wasn't that big either. Yeah. You know what I noticed before is if I told you I want to meet you at seven, I'll I'll be there. Today. 
oh man, I can't come. Sorry. For a less yeah. reliable. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, less reliable. And although we have the greatest technology in the world, I always tell people it seems like people are more busier. <laughs> <laughs> We have all the, we have the greatest technology in the world, but people are more busier. Yeah. It's supposed to make you less busier. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, it's so supposed it's, to make you efficient, right? <laughs> and it just it's become it's, it's, we, this it's, world's changed, man. It's just everything's coming at us so fast. Email, there, there's, text message. There's more excuses. Yeah, absolutely. And then we get caught up sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh shoot, I've been I was on Facebook for like thirty minutes. Oh shoot, we get caught up, man. And people and kids and students and young college students and us we get caught up and we're like man i'm so busy but you're on the facebook for like 30 minutes <laughs> you know so it's it's lots of change man but we got to be careful everyone's on social media i mean not everyone but majority of the people are and people want to look at it and if they don't see what they like they're not going to talk to you or if you show that's negative then that's who you become Although you might not be the negative person, but right. your social media precise you to be negative. Damn it. You're going to be negative. I so should have <laughs> screened some of those podcasts I did back in the day. <laughs> that's okay. No, no, that's back in the day. So I'm times change, kidding. man. Uh, <laughs> times change. You just got to be very careful, man. I don't man. regret anything. Don't. No regrets. No regrets. Uh, who talked about no regrets? Uh, <clears throat> someone talk, forget it. Someone I don't know. One of my really good friends, though, taught me about regrets um, when we were... James, this is for you, James. Um, when we were 19, we were 19 years old, and he asked me if I wanted to do something, and I said no. And uh, he said, man, well, I guess when we're 80 years old and <laughs> we're 90 years old in our wheelchairs, I'm going to be like, hey, Vince, remember when we remember when we did that? Uh, oh, no, you weren't there, dude. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, don't regret. Don't regret not going. Right. Me, you know, <laughs> no regrets, man. Uh, if you if you if everyone lived a life with no regrets, man, we'll see some new fascinated stuff right this at this moment. Because like you mentioned, 89 years old, most folks that are in their deathbeds right now, they probably be thinking, man, I should have done that. I should have done this. I should have done that when I was that age. Yeah. So I tell these young guys in between your ages, if you're like just got out of high school, jump into everything. Right. Everything. Fail. Fail. And fail, fail. And fail fast. Because fail. failure is success. Right. Fail fast. Because most folks just because the school system tells you, oh, you can't fail. Right. And that's where the contradiction <sighs> is. I agree, man. Okay. Man, I agree. Because <laughs> you have to fail. You have to have to fail. And you fail quick. How do you change that, though? It's a, One, you got to find someone that could show you the way. Because school, when they go to college, they're going to say, oh, you shouldn't have failed. Oh, right. man, you failed your tests. That's bad. But in the real world, outside of the education, they say, you better fail fast. But most, cu- most kids are not accustomed to that. Yeah, I think the thing that can get you... Um, a taste of what failures like is getting into sort of like uh, clubs or mm-hmm. sports. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the best way to get a first hand lick at failure. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Our, our senior year, we lost a championship football game and God, that sucked. And you still remember <laughs> the day. It's crazy. How many years ago you said? Yeah, that was uh, 13 years and ago. And you still remember the day. So our subconscious mind is that powerful. But you got to fail, man. Yeah. Most folks are fa- fail, fail to fail are scared to fail yeah and that in itself is already a failure yeah man i've even felt a lot in this podcast yeah i bet you tons. did in the beginning tons yeah tons there you go tons. and you're still doing it yeah I, it's and i think I, I i'd like to attribute it to the love you know you gotta love it you gotta love if we, you're only willing to go back to something that you feel it's like a relationship with right. a human uh-huh when you create a relationship with something that you're that you've tied yourself to mentally, something that you've created from your brain and now it's sort of real life. Um, if you don't love it, then it's never going to grow. It's never going to grow. And it always needs me. It's exactly like having a girlfriend. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it really is. It needs work every day. Yes, it does. You know? it then, and people that think that their relationships don't need work every day, like, oh, we're good. We're good. We don't have to talk today. No. Nah. Yep. There's something. Yeah. There's something that you can fix. Yep. Absolutely. You know, or if not fix, improve. Yes. Every every day. Yeah. That that whole mentality of if it ain't fi- if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like well, it can it can use some maintenance yep. though. That's why Amazon's taking over. Because <laughs> back to that quote, I remember someone said, "If it ain't broke, you why you fix, fix it? it?" Yeah. I was like, "There's always room for growth. Always." Always, 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 yeah. always. You always. can mod it. You can keep modding it. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's why Instagram's changing. WhatsApp's changed. Um, Facebook's changed. Everything's changing. 
And I always say times are changing, but yeah. yeah, just the fact that you can have 300 people on a WhatsApp group. Right. It's insane. Insane. Because it, it, it was only like up to eight when it first started the whole group. There you chat. go. See, yeah. just in that itself has already changed. Yeah. But most folks are like, no, I don't want to change, man. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Because there's no such thing as standing still. You're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. Period. Um. Okay. I got a good question. Okay, go. <clears throat> how often should you reevaluate your situation and what you're doing? How long? How often do you do it? Well, that's a great question. Yeah, because I find myself doing it not fairly often, but every every few months, I ca- I sort of just sit back and really think about everything I'm everything that's in my life and what doesn't need to be in my life. And what needs to be in my life, and every what I want in my life, and what I don't want in my How life. How often? Well, every few months. That's yeah. good. It's important. It's important. Yeah. I think. I think people that talk to themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's no, good because because uh, uh, we need. Uh, we live in a world where everything's coming at us, right? Right. So we need that time where it's just like, hey, disconnect. Right. Um, disconnect. I always even share like you got to have a place to go and just disconnect. Don't even take your phone there. Just disconnect. I have a place that I go to in two months at a hotel, and I look out to the beach and just disconnect. Maybe a notepad and a pencil. But yeah, you just got to disconnect. Um, I used to, before I had my family, I used to do it like every maybe a few months. Yeah. Okay. But n- things change, obviously. For sure. Uh, definitely for sure. at least once a year. For sure. Once a year. Uh, but when it gets a little bit combobulated, then yeah, you might have to take a few months. But if you do it every f- so often, that's really, really good. That's when you just need <coughs> to like. Yeah. Whether it's good or bad. Yeah. Whether disconnect. you're going through some shit yeah. or you're not going through some right. shit. You got to just disconnect. <coughs> we have to disconnect because uh, we're so like on our phones today. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to re- we, ha- we have to reply to a message in like 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, how come you're not replying back to me? Yeah. I saw a tweet from Bill Murray is that social media was supposed to empower us, but it ended up having e- making everybody compare each other, compare ourselves to others. Yeah. And that's and that's <coughs> and, and that's the tough part. And if we spend all our time on social media, that's all we're going. That's all we're doing. We never really get to know who we are. Right. Only in a reflection of how we look at others. True. And it's sad. And it's a sad thing. Um, you know, we and then it depends how these, ki- or especially our young group, right? Who they looking up to? Right. And it's unfortunately it's the I don't want to name names, but <laughs> unfortunately it's like it's L.A. Right. Okay, if you know what I'm getting at, it's L.A. And that's sad because. At the end of the day, how much influence, what are they getting out of it? Yeah. You know, because you don't have to look like this person or you don't have to look, or you don't have to do what that person does. Right. Because at the end of the day, they don't know you. Okay. Um, well, it, it comes down to identity, right? Um, we come from a melting pot of cultures here. Mm-hmm. Then we uproot ourselves at the age of 17, 18, throw ourselves into the bigger pot of the United States. Yep. And all of a sudden, we have no idea who the fuck we are. And now we're having to tie ourselves to some sort of culture, subculture Mm -hmm. to find to really find ourselves, whether it's the right subculture or not. True. Where's the mom and dad now? (laughs) If our if our parents are not our heroes, we have issues. Hmm. If our hero, if our hero is very, very, very strong statement. Yeah. Yeah. If our hero is a rapper. Something's wrong. If our hero is a some sports dude something's wrong where's mom and dad right. i know that i know that's strong right. that's like that's real deep because i know a lot of people that their parents are their heroes yeah but i know there's a lot more that is not my older sister's my hero good <laughs> that's fine <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you know but i don't know if she'll hear this but <laughs> she you're, she you're she my hero <laughs> there you go she, you know you're my hero with big sis so it's again it's just but it's for those that don't know that stuff eventually when they bump into someone or they could get guided and that's where people come in some some people come into some people's lives for a reason yeah you know and that, that happens yeah um yeah honestly me bring up parents man um my parents have been a great guiding force there you go you know especially my my younger siblings mm-hmm. and and my older sibling and it's um it's cool wow it just got choked up it's uh it's good dude you know it's it's really just to have that sort of relationship with my parents absolutely too to where they only wanted the best for me. Of and then course. when I did exactly, you know, like what they wanted me to achieve, they're like, all right, okay, now go ahead. <laughs> you know? Like, what were their thoughts about thing. all of this? Right. Uh, oh, um, they questioned it at first. Of course. Yeah, you know? they're <laughs> like, what is a podcast? You know? 
Yeah. You're going to do what? Talk to people for two hours? <laughs> 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, eventually, as it started gaining traction and people were noticing it and people would ask them about it, yeah. uh, they'll be, they were like, holy crap. You know? Yeah. It's a uh, and that's this everyone. Is, this is something real, and that's everybody. Uh, that's everyone. That's everyone. Because uh, there's even young guys that are in like 18, 19, 20, 21 that wanted to go into entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. and they ask your mom and dad. And then if the mom and dad will say, "Yeah, go for it," then they won't do it. Yeah. And so just 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 that little gap there, a lot of people can't become successful because they listen to their mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the biggest rule my my parents had growing up was go to college. You know, traditional, right? Traditional That's college. You're gonna go to college, get your education, then you can go figure out if you're gonna, if you can make it. You know, <laughs> and it still is. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of <clears throat> graduation year right now, right? Yeah. Around the world. Yeah. You know, colleges are this is when they make the money. Right. <laughs> and um, so, shit, I'm I'm here. I fucking did this, so it's uh, it's cool. Yeah, it's good. Cool to get that sort of support, and that, and you're you're so right. If a parent, if the parents aren't active in the child's life, child. Yeah. Going down to child, um, then that sort of direction that they're taking is probably not the best direction. But the funny thing is, sometimes those are the kids that really make it mm. because they didn't have that. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, you're 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 right. very right. We can't just say it's all all inclusive, right. right? So it's crazy. So it just depends, man. Things happen for a reason. It's just a journey of life. Yeah, and one yeah. thing I've learned on this show, at least, is um, it comes to self. Whether it becomes, we were talking about identity earlier, when mm-hmm. it comes, it's just self. What do you, you want based off what you're doing and your thoughts, not based off of their thoughts, his exactly. thoughts, her thoughts, yes. mom thoughts, dad thoughts, right. sister thoughts, brother thoughts. So true. So true. Because it's just, I always say something like, uh, Everyone has a everyone has a nose, or everyone has opinions. Just like noses, we all have one, and most people like to. I like to, to say asshole. Or oh, okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. As you know, I haven't. I don't cuss much yeah, yeah, at yeah, yeah, all. Yeah. I've, okay. I've cussed like fifty thousand times um, on this episode it's, alone. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. I respect. But yeah, just opinions. Stop listening to people's opinions. Just stop. Unless it's someone that you, you trust. You trust. You have the. They, they have the lifestyle, the fruit. Like you want their lifestyle. And they're gonna willing to help you, then okay. But other than that, stop listening to your friends, hmm. especially your circle of friends. Stop listening to their opinions. If you want to do something and they say no, do it. Yeah. If they say yeah, yeah, go for it, then question it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know how Guam has that sort of crabs in a bucket mm-hmm. uh, stigma placed yeah. upon it. Yep. Do you think that's going away anytime soon, or has it gone away? Uh, no, I don't think it's gone away. <laughs> I I think it's just more noticeable because we're a smaller population. True. I think crabs in a bucket it uh, happens everywhere. Yes, it does. But there's more of a microscopic crabs in a bucket because Hello. when you make it, uh-huh. you're like, oh shit, they're from Guam. They yeah. made it. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But it, it's a. Uh, I think that's why it's maybe that's why that stigma is more pronounced or prof- is it pronounced? I don't know. It's uh, it's much th- bigger here on Guam right, than, than it is because we're, we're so small. Right, right. Uh, just jump out of the bucket. So you gotta jump out of the bucket. <clears throat> Does that mean leave Guam? No, it doesn't mean. But you might need a new circle of friends. Ooh, man, back to the. Yep, because you got to get a new bucket. Matt, Brian, we're going to have to replace it. Because <laughs> if the bucket is with the same <laughs> friends, you just can't joking. think. I love you guys. I love you guys. I'm just joking. <laughs> I think this might be their last <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. No. What happened to Matt and Brian? No, I'm controlling the cameras myself <laughs> today. <laughs> no, so you got to get a new bucket. Hmm. You got to get a new bucket, man. You have to. Have to, have to, have to, because we got to stretch our minds. If you're in the same, or I, always, uh, I always learned two years ago, if you're the sharpest person in the room, get new, get a new room. Because there's always someone growing. There's always someone better than you going to that room. Because you got to be stretched. You have to grow. And it's personal growth. But yes, jump out of the bucket. And yes, you can. But with both feet, not just one. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you, can't jump, you can't jump off a cliff. You hit, can't. hit the ground running. Yeah, it's got to go. Just like your story here. Hmm. It's not an interesting story, everybody. 
Oh, it is. <laughs> uh, wait till you get really good one day. Maybe we'll switch the flip here. And I'll ask the, all the questions. <laughs> I'll ask all the questions. You know? Um, uh, maybe one day people will hear it. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Maybe, I, I'm, maybe you're 10. <sighs> Man, I, I can't even. I, I honestly can't see myself in, in year 10. I don't even know where. You cannot or you can't? I, I cannot imagine what it would be like. I can't it's I, it's not that I can't imagine me being there it's what it would be like because I wouldn't I I couldn't imagine sitting in front of cameras in 3 years doing this let alone doing this for 3 years I celebrated doing this for 1 year I was like dude 1 year I've been doing this <laughs> hell yeah So here's my challenge to you <laughs> develop your 7 year program hmm. And what does that entail exactly What do you want where do you want this to be in seven years? Hmm. I, I, that this is your right, right, of yeah, course, I of course. No idea. I guess a general aspect, yeah, a I general have, aspect. So, where do you want to be in seven years? What kind of what, what's your numbers in seven years? What's where do you what kind of office you want? What is it that you want to be in seven years? That's just seven years. I want I want Matt and Brian to be looking over uh, a Gagne Bay. <laughs> 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 that's just a seven. That's your, you gotta write that, man. It's gonna go by fast. Yeah, it's gonna go. So by it's gonna come. Right. Yeah, man. Uh, I freak out at how quickly my twenties went by. Exactly, and it goes by faster. Uh, what are you now? I'm thirty this year. Yeah, it's gonna go by real fast. <coughs> thirty-five. You go blink your eye. It's thirty-five. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm about to turn forty. I don't <laughs> feel like forty. Me neither. Yeah, we don't. I mean, I don't feel like thirty, but right. Yeah. You just gotta, just you gotta write it. You gotta fight for it. It's, it's gonna come by fast. It's a constant battle, everybody. You just got to keep battling. Yes. Once you stop battling and you get lazy, that's where depression sets in. Mm-hmm. And I I go through small spurts every now and then just to mentally. And two, week, two weeks prior to this, I didn't do a podcast just because. Or has it been three weeks? It's been two or three weeks, right? It hasn't been like a week, dude. Just a week. No, it hasn't been just a week. <laughs> it's had to have been two weeks. When yeah, was, when was Eric Rachmani? <laughs> you don't mm-hmm. remember. I don't know. That was <laughs> that was that was know. before <laughs> <laughs> it had to have been like two and a half weeks, right? Two and a half weeks? Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Four twenty. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, it was four twenty. Three weeks. Yeah, it's May fifteenth right now. Yeah. <clears throat> so I um yeah, I just needed a real mental realignment. You know? Just mentally reassess what I'm doing and everything everything that's happening right now. Good. Right? Because we all need to go through. We all need <coughs> that time. Yeah. Yes. Year three, man. You should have a year f- you should have a fifth year plan by now. Yeah, I don't even have a business plan. You know, <laughs> it's it just because, it, and it's only I haven't developed the business side of it because I love this so much. Uh huh. You know, and I'm, you know, I got my day job. Right. And. And the business side of it is all new to me, and, then on top of a million other things that i've had it's like where do you find the time right make it yeah you make it make it that's it period (sighs) because you you don't want all these last three years to go to waste i know we're talking about your podcast now yeah yeah. (laughs) i know we kind (laughs) of i think we switched the flip here already Uh, you know but anyway okay let's go back to you let's flip it around i'm not here to Uh, we can do this offline yeah no problem yeah absolutely so what else we want to talk about growth Mm. i have the basketball clinic yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. yeah. Um, when I was going to high school, yeah. I was a freshman. You were a senior, and that's all I've known you for was the basketball guy. Basketball guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you play ball. That's yeah. that's about it. That's that's the extent of anything that I actually know about you. Oh, it's all so, good. Um, it's 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 really cool to dig into your brain on the entrepreneurial mm-hmm. and um, and just the whole personal self growth Mm -hmm. aspect of it and uh yeah basketball where did where where did basketball start for you coaching when i first moved back in 08 yeah but Um, how about just playing in general understanding the game eighth grade that was high school fd yeah i started eighth grade that was my actual my first year i started playing i just introduced an introduction to basketball Uh, not like today these kids are introduction to basketball like second grade it's crazy i never heard of basketball (coughs) until eighth grade and i started eighth grade and then fd for four years and that was it and then try it out for college, but that's a whole different level, you know. And then eventually, when I moved back here, uh, jumped onto the coaching staff at FD, and I'm still there as we speak. And it's been it's been a great journey, just the growth. Since of it. 08, you're saying? First class was 09, so then okay. yeah, so 08, so class <coughs> 09. Okay. Class 09, and it's crazy. It's just a, it's it's totally different coaching. I know a lot of people watch the game, but being around coaching the last few years, like 
head on. Yeah. It's it's a different. It's totally different. A lot a lot to learn. In in what in what aspect? Just the game. <coughs> just the game. Offense and defense. Uh, reading defenses, m- reading mismatches. It's crazy, man. It's 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 a totally different ball game. Yeah. When you're coaching the game, and, then, and now as a coach, and when I watch a game, I watch it totally different than I would as years ago. As so a you're fan. watching the playoffs right now, like in a. <laughs> no, no, not really. no, you don't care no, for it. No, I don't. Not really. Yeah. I, I keep track of the score, but yeah, uh, NBA, man. I actually don't even have a television. Really? I don't watch television. I, have, I haven't had. A, I personally had not owned a television since I started my business at 21. Really? Yep. If you want to be successful in life, you can't watch TV. <coughs> Shit. Cannot. You can't. <sighs> not so, even Netflix. <laughs> so no, but so now that I have my family, so there is a TV in my <coughs> house. Right. But just Netflix for my daughter. Right. But other than that, I, w- I will not sit and on on the couch and watch TV. I can't. It's like, that's time. I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, eventually, one day, yeah. But do I have my times where I just sit ch- ch- back and catch up on some stuff? Yes, of course there is. Yeah. That's why we have YouTube. How often do you spend on your phone? <sighs> Doing stuff. Every Whether farting around or oh. serious around. Every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Every day. Absolutely. You know, I, I don't get me wrong. I still catch the ESPN, the scores and stuff. But me actually watch. I have not watched the game from tip off to so end. you are not updated with game of thrones god dang it no, that's sir. what i wanted to talk about tonight jimmy get the next person <laughs> when it comes to my last talk about you talking about video games i haven't played a video game in years my <coughs> last my last video game system i had that i personally bought playstation one <laughs> that was donated to me and that was the last one i got <laughs> <laughs> no lie and I didn't even buy any video video games for it. it was a demo that I had and then we gave it away I was not a video game guy I know I'm crazy right, right? I'm Korean too <laughs> but yeah no television man you will not catch me watch a game from tip to end never not even a Super Bowl because it just it I just learned that do you just get bored or not only that, no, not that it's just bored it's just and it's crazy. I used to watch these things, yeah. and that's the crazy part. Yeah, just pull it down so I can I, I can only see your oh. nose. Oh. So okay, there. Sorry, literally, there. your mouth is like this, <laughs> and all I like to see is your nose doing this. <laughs> crazy, good. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't watched the game. Yeah. I, I mean, I watch parts of here and there, but like actually sitting down from beginning to end is very hard. <laughs> it's just not. I'd rather read a book. I'm on my. I forget what number book I am on right now, but yeah. And then people say you gotta read. It's it's amazing. It's just you gotta. I rather read a book. Have you book. always been a reader? No, I started. I read my first book cover to cover at eight when I graduated from FD. Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. That was my first book I read and changed the course of my life. And then from today I read. I read a minimum of one book a month, minimum. But I'm on my like tenth book of the year so far. Four years ago I read sixty five books or uh, sixty books in one year. <laughs> wow. Yeah. If you're not reading, you're not growing. Impressive. Man, no, you gotta read, man. Holy moly! Like I have a book in my bag right now. You, you gotta read. How many hours of time do you spend reading? I never time it. If, if I, I I read when I'm stuck. If I ever am stuck in traffic, I hate traffic. By the way, if I'm ever stuck in traffic, my book is on my hand. If I ever go to do an errand and there's like a long line, which I hate, one if <coughs> I if I have to be in that line, believe me, I'll, I'm on my book. How do you zone in to what you're reading, outside of? You just zone out. The, the ambience. <laughs> you zone out. You're just in the book. You're in the book. I, you got to read. So, so then shut the TV off. Honestly, I can't even read when I'm listening to a podcast. Well, no, it's like no, it's just that's different because the podcast is talking. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not but I, I guess I'm just like, I'm, I'm just thinking podcast is almost like people conversating when they're around. Yeah, that's different. It's ha- probably hard to read okay, a book okay. and, po- and someone Public conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you got to read, man. It's amazing. C- shut the TV off. Everyone. Everyone in Guam should shut the TV off. I think every single person. If if we spend, if all everyone spends more time going out and implementing the idea they have in their mind, instead of watching television, lots of changes, good stuff. Television is number one killer, man. Most folks right now, what time is it? Five thirty or six thirty? Six fifty. Six fifty already. TV's on. <coughs> yeah. Television is on right now as we speak. Yep. Probably either watching the news or catching up on something that happened yesterday. Or the newest Netflix series. Yeah. I don't watch television, man. I, I'll catch it occasionally here and there, but I, I I knew a girl who um didn't own a TV either. She was she was a hippie. <laughs> I think she still is. <laughs> I think hippie is a lifestyle, right? So read, man, read. We gotta read. Yeah, she was a big she was big on reading. Yeah, I gotta read, man. Mm. You don't read? <laughs> I put you on the spot. <laughs> no, nah, dude. I, I, I mean, I read articles, but I, c- I literally don't have the, um, 
how do I say this? I don't have I don't I don't really have the patience to to sit through a book because there's so much distractions. I literally have to be in a quiet place. That's fine to read. Go. Cool. Really fine. I'll get you a book when I, when I come see you next time. I'll get you a book. Okay. You gotta read because it's a personal growth plan. Right. If so, if we were talking about personal growth, okay. you have to have a plan for it. Period. John yeah. Maxwell said it best. You got you gotta if you stop reading, you stop growing. Yeah. It's not that, yeah. I I don't I don't read fucking sixty five books a a year, dude. That was, that's that's for that. sure. And then I mean those forty books. I've probably in my life I've probably read cover to cover maybe like five books. Okay, we need to start changing that <laughs> to take you to the next level. Yeah, where you want to go. Yeah, let's change that. I'm there. I'm let's there. Yeah, you man. You gotta change it. I would I would I would love that help and guidance, dude. No you problem. Know? You gotta change it. You gotta grow, man gotta because that's how you get better yeah and uh we live in a world where it's all about relationships now it's yeah. relationship based and if we don't know how to work with people things go wrong you gotta remember people don't leave companies people leave people because there's you and i you probably know there's a lot of managers and supervisors out there yeah that are like oh, man what the hell's wrong with you right so they leave and they go find another spot to work at. Mm -hmm. So the company's great. They didn't, they, didn't left, they didn't leave the company. It was just the management didn't know how to deal with people. And a huge difference between a manager and a leader. Right. Another topic. Right, right. And we have to read. And that's where you learn it. Whether in anything. Even I, I even tell athletes, you have to learn how to re You have to read. Because, like, there's some athletes that I personally know and that want to become a leader of a, of a team. If you don't know how to lead, then how are you going to leave? Oh, I just learned it as a goal. Oh, no, you ain't. Here's a book, man. I don't care if you skim through the pages or you just read the parts that highlight it. Read it. Something will click. Something will click. So when you say, how do you read with all the noise? You might not get soaked up on everything. Right. But something will <clears> go into <throat> your subconscious mind and it'll change eventually. Yeah. I think that's why I like podcasts because it's, um, you're, you're not consciously taking in everything that, especially like this, con like this, uh, long form conversational mm -hmm. podcast uh, in general. Um, you're not taking in everything, but it's more like triggers, like highlighted pages, right? right? right. You'll hear a trigger word. You're like, oh, no, nope, that there interests go. me. Yeah. So that's fine, too. I know a lot of people do audio books, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. If anything, just soak it in. I don't care if you're listening to it or you're reading it. You got to soak it in one way or another. But if you're not, then <clears> that's. I really got to try the audio book thing again. Try the audio book. I tried. Thing. Yeah, I you tried did. it. But um, it was. I couldn't get. Maybe I chose the wrong book. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fucking possible. I chose the wrong book. That's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah, you gotta read, man. You gotta read. It's a big thing. You gotta read. It's amazing. I have a library at my house. I have I have more books. Yeah. I got there's one more television. books than DVDs. <laughs> yeah. Very. I got one TV in our house. One. That's for my baby. And occasionally, my other half of my watch something. But other than that. So you read almost every chance you get. Yeah, every chance. Okay. Like today, what did I do today? Oh, I was waiting for my barber get my haircut guess what everyone else was waiting on their phone i was on my book every chance so when people say i don't have time to read yeah you do you just gotta make it even if you're sitting on the toilet you either choose to get the phone <sighs> or you choose to get a book i'm a phone user i admit a lot of people are now <laughs> shit this phone this phone's changed a lot you know it's crazy that's how like you know just gotta read man it's amazing how a lot of people want to stop, don't want to read anymore. Cause yeah. it's personal growth plan. You gotta have a personal growth plan. Right, right, right. Yeah. I would, I would love, I would love to get into the whole uh, reading aspect, dude. Um, shit, we went off on a huge tangent. We never talked about basketball. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, coaching. basketball clinic, coaching, man. <laughs> coaching. Stuff like that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we started off. See, that's how podcast works, right? You just go off on topics. I feel uh, like man, it, you know, it happens a lot on this. Happens, yeah, basketball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before coaching, you know, I, I know you know we don't have. Uh, it's okay, no problem. How, how far are we along? Uh, right under an hour. Okay, that's Thanks. crazy. Wow, yeah, yeah. that goes by fast. Goes by quick, man. Yeah, you know, um, coaching. Yeah, uh, clinic coming up in a couple, three weeks. June fourth, four weeks, every day. Why do something like this? Why? Uh, yeah. The market's there. Okay. Uh, the market's there. What do you see? Yeah. What do you see the, the positives and the progression of Guam basketball oh, by great. doing it? Oh, by yeah. doing what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, I guess as a junior national coach. Um, I'll get to be able to share <coughs> exactly what we do in a national program. Right. You know, just helping man obviously the success part, the the principles, the life skills and things like that. So that'll help, you know. Um yeah. 
We're g- <coughs> it's, it's all about fun. In the summertime, two hours a day for four weeks, 40 hours for the first session, and then I'll probably do a second session in July. And it'll be fun. We'll go do that. We'll go do that. We'll all be at FD. And three on three tournament. Three on three tournament is another big thing coming out. 2020 Olympics. Yeah, I had no idea that was like a worldwide thing for so people wor- to yeah. play f- three on three. Three on three, man. It's fast. It's quick. You got to be in good shape. Um, yeah, I just played two on two basketball <laughs> today, and I'm tired. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anything. I am beat, yeah, two dude. on two, three on threes. Those are tiring. You're fucking running. Yeah. the whole time. Yeah, you're dude. moving. You got to move without the basketball. You got to learn how to make your cuts, read defense, and all that stuff. Yeah. So coaching's been fun, man. I uh, made a positive impact on all the relationships. Uh, the championships are great. The coach, the games are great, but it's just the relationships, man. Over the years, and it's been fun. Uh, males, females, both, both. Yeah, both. You know, over academy and FD, and it's been fun, man. Just the growth, and you see them come back eventually, and after they graduate from college, and it's been fun, man. It's fun. How is it seeing students that you coach while they're in high school now, currently in the in the in the in the system, the NCAA system, right? D- yeah. Division two, uh-huh. couple yep. Division two yep. players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fun. It's great, man. It just, it's just like, man, they, they did it, you know. And although they might not be playing a lot, yeah. Um, well, Cali and Destiny are. You know, it's fun. It's just, it's just I, I wish we could go there and watch them play. You know, hopefully one day I can, uh, within the next two years, because they got two more years. But uh, it's different. Oh, it's different, man. College basketball is a whole nother level. So how do you prepare the youth here for the potential to go there? You gotta tell them everything. It's, it's breakfast, lunch, dinner. Any college sport, not just basketball. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner. And then we can't get caught up in that where we're talking about the Guam society where you get caught up. You're either yeah. on the court. I'm going to move to San Diego <laughs> and just hang out with all the Guam people there. <laughs> you know, so that's <laughs> why actually a lot of kids move. Yeah. So they could just work because the kids in the States, man, they, this is, if their goal is to get to a division one, two, that's all they're doing every day. So w- w- with our kids here, what we need to tell them, this is what the kids are doing in the States. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to do exactly what they're doing, yeah. but you got to do somewhat of almost what they're doing. What are the opportunities for players here on Guam to go to the Asia circuit? Because it seems like the Asia circuit Asia is sort of it's growing, open. right? Actually, everything's open, man. Yeah. Everything, even the States. The Uz- and you can play for Uzbekistan. <laughs> <and the laughs> yeah, it's open. Cause especially, and then again, come to do this stuff. Yeah. It's open. You know, YouTube, you can put your own video out now. You know, back in our days, if you had to do a video at VHS, you have to mail it out <laughs> or DVD <laughs> at that time or whatever it was. You had to mail it out. But today, you just send an email. Check out my YouTube link. Oh, yeah, check out my YouTube link. So yeah. the opportunities are there, man. Whether it's Asia, Philippines, or States, it's there. And then the fact that the, we have a lot of college Guam kids that went to go play college, any sport, the opportunities are there. But the fact is a kid has to work. You got to work your butt off, man. Being here, you have to work 10 times harder. Because one were smaller, <clears throat> so do you need to get do you need to get the youth into that sort of mindset of eat, breathe, and play Absolutely. sports, yep. and rather than just a just a secondary yep. uh, well, recreational, recreational uh, time. time, right? <laughs> you know, yes, absolutely. The kids <clears throat> need to know that, man. Sort of like, create farms now. You got to You got it. It's just a mindset, and then uh, we have too many sports too sometimes. Because okay. if a, a kid in the states basketball, it is basketball, it is. We're here. We have like different sports. Which I'm not knocking it, yeah. but it eventually you have got to a lot of Iron Men here. <laughs> you gotta pick <laughs> and a women. sport. <laughs> you just gotta pick a sport and just stick it, man. Yeah. And you get breakfast, lunch, dinner, man. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Oh man. And it, I feel like that's hard to teach. It is because it's a mindset. On Cali, I just spoke. She just got back, and she's like, we're talking about this college and stuff, and she's like, I just don't know if these other players have it. Because I was like, let me guess, breakfast, lunch, dinner. She's like, yeah. Ever since it's old players here, have yeah, can't, no, there are certain players that want to go to the next level, mm-hmm. but it's like I don't know, because it's 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 that's that's a that's a heavy loaded uh yeah it's it's heavy school and on, on top of that school, so breakfast lunch dinner and you don't even have you're not guaranteed to play every single game, again Michael Zakazaki for example, he finished the process four years, so proud of the kid man, and how many minutes did he really play, right. Not much, but fought through it. Yeah, still played. Still, still played the chances that he can't play, and but majority of the games he never went in. Yeah, never. But every day practice, four a.m. workout, every day, putting in the work, putting in the work, come back home, putting in the work. But that doesn't mean it's over for him, right? Just because he went through the system and now he's out of the system. No, now he could do what he wants to do, give back somehow, some way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, but just the process. Can can kids go through that? And that's every sport, man. 
most kids just can't survive that. It's like, this, is it worth it? Because you, when you, especially coming here, right, you're like the all star. You're like, man, I play every game. I don't want to, you know. And then you go there and you're like, dang, I can't even get in a game. I ain't shit. Right. Yeah. Because I still remember since we're talking with Mike, I hope maybe he'll listen to this one day. I remember his one year he called me. He's like, I can't do this anymore. Just mentally broke. It's mentally. It's a mental thing. And I tell every single athlete that I've helped along the way, when, whether whatever sport it is, it's gonna happen. Call me. Uh, DeAndre Cruz. We're just talking with DeAndre Cruz. Okay. Looks good. Yeah, yeah. He's you know, going off to San Jose to play football. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him one day a few weeks ago, and I said, <coughs> "There's gonna be a day, where it's just gonna be a that moment." Yeah. Call me. Yeah. Because it's gonna come. <coughs> My sister's getting ready to go play D1 rugby in for Dartmouth. So. Yeah. Oh, shit. I had no idea. Ali's your sister. Yeah, yeah. You know, your sister and I are very close, right? Really? I you had no idea. No, no, I didn't no know Ali was your sister. <laughs> Holy smokes. Now I know why all of you guys are in this house. <laughs> Holy cow. You, oh, I didn't know Ali was your We're sister. Cousin, oh, We're so that's the picture of family. I was supposed to go to the thing. Okay. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I was with the Thompson whole thing situation yeah, happening. Right, I was right, with them. Right. Yeah, Ali. Man, your sister and I are like. And no idea. I'm, I'm so much closer how? to your how sister so? than how you. So? She was my. She played my fresh, her freshman year oh, at academy. That's right. That's right. Yes, yeah, man. Yeah, I love you. I love your sister, man. She wanted to play this. I hope year. she listens to this. <laughs> and your mom. And, your mom and I are close friends, okay, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Holy yeah. cow! <laughs> yeah, we just got that much closer. Okay. This podcast just got very, very interesting now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ali. You listen to this. A, love you, girl. I'm just just um, master. But yeah, Ali. Ali played freshman year. Okay. Defense beast mode, and she was awesome. And I love, I love her personality. Um, sophomore year, unfortunately, couldn't play. I think she had a shoulder, shoulder injury. Yeah, yeah, right, happened. right, right. Uh, junior, I think just something happened again. The senior year, she tried out. Unfortunately, something happened again. Right, and, right. And I told her, don't worry, it's just a process, girl. Um, and then, yeah, the, she told me about the rugby. I was like, fantastic. I bumped into your mom. She brought it up, man. I still remember the day. We bumped into Macy's at the mall, and she talked to, she brought up the Dartmouth. And the rugby, I was like, awesome, oh, great. I hope she goes. And then when the day was signing, she, I spoke to your mom, and she's like, oh, Jimmy, can you come? Yeah, yeah. I was like, are you sure? <laughs> and she's like, you know, I have Ali tell you. And then Ali texts me the next day, like, oh, coach, can you come to that? I was like, yeah, of course. If anything, the, something, the, if nothing important pops up, right, I'll right, be there. Right. And if something came out, I called her. Uh, I called her that morning when I knew I couldn't go. I called her like seven ish in uh, the morning. She missed the call, but she called me back like, sorry, I, I had to call you for this. I can't make it. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, it would be and dope to have you as sort of a mental guide too for her. Yeah, you know? well, like once you, like, you know, this is crazy. Going, I had no idea. She's going out to the East Coast. And, and, I, and I messaged her. I was like, girl, you just opened the door for other For athletes. everybody. And that's what I told her too. I was like, dude, opportunity just opened up for everybody. Yeah. Crap, dude, I didn't even know until all this time. <laughs> Ali's brother. I even saw the family picture that one of the I almost didn't bring it up actually, dude. Yeah, I, I, I just because did because it's been like three or four straight podcasts. I'm like, yeah, my sister. <laughs> I had no idea, dude. And I saw the picture with the family that you guys took at the, right, at right. the signing, and right, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just didn't click. I was like, oh, shh, it clicked now because I know that's the cousin because right, you know, right, I knew right. all of that. Right, and right. then I saw him, I was like, okay, it didn't click with the whole Ada <laughs> Ali thing. So, Ali, listen to this. big up. I love you, girl. Yeah, I mean, man. Ali's awesome. Yeah, man. super proud of her, dude. Super. So, and I told her, and we're gonna take her out in August. I'm gonna tell her, you know, like she going to Maine. Yeah, freeze her butt yeah. off. New Hampshire, New Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire. Yeah, I've still gonna freeze her butt off. <laughs> freeze her butt off. <laughs> she gonna come so, back. Uh, so I, she gonna come back lighter uh, than you. <laughs> I I told her I was like, it seems far, but you're closer to everybody than you really think. Yeah, you know, yeah. now now not only do you have a telephone call, you have text yeah, message, everything. you have email, you have FaceTime, you have Skype, you have. You have everything under the sun to I feel hope she knows she, close to home. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. I think she does. Um, yeah. When she went to that camp, yeah, that was breakfast, lunch, and dinner breakfast, lunch, of good. rugby. Good. And uh, her visit uh, in a couple months ago, that's they gave her a taste of what they're going to go good. through every every day. Good. Yeah. Man, I should call her right now. <laughs> Actually, let's just do that. See where she at. Actually, let's just uh, <laughs> let me call her on. Oh, no, it's graduation today. How come? Oh no! no graduation is Friday. Yeah. Sorry, I was back to say, here. Coming out of the graduation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, 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 uh, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. That's crazy. I had no idea. <laughs> Man. <coughs> sister. Holy smokes! So, yeah, I mean, well, we're yeah, man, she was a we're beast, doing man, it on the court. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, basketball. <laughs> See, exactly, a perfect example of why I keep coaching. It's been fun. So the clinic, man, is crazy. Yeah, but man, crazy. Yeah, I didn't realize you're so close to to my family in that way. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. even with your mother. Your mother, I have your mother. Like, I can call her right now. <laughs> She'll probably answer. And then the whole, you know, the funeral stuff. Yeah, right, 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 right. I see right. you out and about, and yeah, I'm really close to your mom. I, and your I'm the I'm the unknown soldier. The unknown one. <laughs> 
<laughs> your father, you know, your father's out and about. With yeah, always, yeah. So yeah. I didn't get to really meet your father in that way. But yeah, your mom. Yeah, your mom is. Dude, work works hard. Yeah, and so <clears throat> and she's, you know, I, and she's always a uh, bubbly. Tell my, I tell my parents all the time. I was like, dude, this is all you guys. What she's going through right now, this is all you guys. You know, it's like, yeah, I was there along the way. Yeah. But for the most part, you guys guided her and encouraged her to do exactly what she needed to do. This is what this is where we at. Yeah. You know, a year ago, we didn't see ourselves. You know, like, uh-huh. all right, let's go. We're preparing to go to Dartmouth. <laughs> <laughs> Because of all places, man. I've no, never been geez. up there. Yeah. <laughs> Bottle Hunter, if you ever go there, you'll come back white. <laughs> <laughs> He's already white. <laughs> 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 I think I'm sure. Park hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't take your shirt off when yeah. it's winter time over there. Have you seen his ass? <laughs> You're whiter. No, I seen his ass. <laughs> awesome, man. Holy cow. I had no idea. Yeah. Small world, man. And yeah. uh, it, 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 it makes sense why, you know, like the connection. Yeah. You know. I think everything happens for a reason. Absolutely, right. Everything. There, there was, there's no reason why I came up on your page on the explore page, and started following you and. Re- it happened with really the EIF thing. Oh, that's when you reached out to me. That was you. Yeah, when you reached out to me with the EIF once I posted once the EIF article came out a few weeks back. Sorry. Is that when it happened? I don't remember. Something like um, that. Um. Well, I started following you, and then I and then you just been on my brain for like a couple months. You know, just like hmm. Okay. Let me get this guy on. Get cool. this guy on. Get this guy on. Because I know of you, yeah. right? It's, 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 that's that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, but yeah. now now that, damn, I didn't realize that you had that relationship with my family. Yeah, cool. I, it's cool. It's crazy. Yeah. I have no idea. Dude. It's just. I'm just that older brother that uh, just <laughs> does his own thing on the side. <laughs> it's crazy. Even Dan, right? Trevor's father. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just asked Dan the other day when I was over there. I was like. Oh, where's the biology kids? Oh, they're here, na 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 na. And yeah. I thought of him uh, yeah. uh, off the bat because when I w- always go there, I, was, I know I remember him working there. Right. And then yeah, we were just talking, and it's crazy. Yeah, Dan and I we were just talking about because his son's a student, mm-hmm. right? And I had him too. And yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> this this whole family <laughs> thing, man. No, which is great, right? Uh, this is what it's all about. At yeah. the end of the day, no matter what you do, it's it's family. God first, of course, and then family. Yeah. Because you know, chasing the buck is great, but the buck don't go with you at the end of the day. You know, just about the family and the legacy and it's just building a legacy now, man. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate that I can have family helping me out with with this show. And Brian, of course, your family, buddy. See, now I'm, I know I'm kind of going off topic now, even with now the fact that I know who you are. There's probably even like you probably gone through some stuff where like, oh, man, his mom and dad just helped him out. Yeah, probably man. Of, that. of course, yeah. dude. Um, right? You know, a lot of people just believe. Right. Believe things that aren't true. Absolutely. Based off. Based off the, you know, based off the, st- the status, right? Yeah. Or wh- where my parents are, right. where my dad was as a senator. Right. So, so even y- in that case, you could have been the guy that just, okay, I'm just going to live with mom and dad. Right. But you didn't. So that's awesome. So so people, was, uh, so uh, negativity will come at you anyway, man. Yeah. Uh, one thing my dad always taught me is whether you do good or bad, people are going to talk about you. Yeah, absolutely. So do good. Yeah. Totally, dude. hundred percent. hundred percent. And that's in every aspect. My dad doesn't realize, but I've taken a lot of a lot of wisdom from him and have applied it to, you know, like how I live my life. Good. You know, ethically. And Good. Because you, know, you got to always, at the end of the day. Morally. You know, we, we have to go to bed. And do. it's just integrity and <coughs> just do the right thing. Yeah. So good for you, man. This is awesome. Like, <laughs> like, like your story just got bigger for me. Oh man, don't yeah, because the process <laughs> and just the stuff that you, I, I guarantee you, the stuff that you had to go through in the beginning. Oh man, his mom and dad probably helped him out. Oh no, he just. I guarantee you, there's probably people that maybe they didn't tell you that, yeah. but they probably said it in the background somewhere, and mm. then you didn't care about it. Might be right. Yeah, yeah, you didn't care about it because uh, I'm pretty sure they, that's what the people say. Because people are always gonna talk, and the fact that you're three years in, fantastic, man. Thank you. Don't stop. Thank you. Wait till year ten. And all the non-sayers, naysayers, they're like, oh, man, he made it. Crap. You got to shut up. But once you quit, you let them win. It's amazing how many people quit today, man. They're so, so close. And like you said earlier, they don't even make it to the first step. No. But they're the ones that's talking a lot. And they're the ones at the bar in that crowd with the bucket uh, chit-chatting. The idea man. Yeah. I call them the idea man. Got a lot of ideas, man. (laughs) But like Gary Vee, I think he has that sign in his wall, right? Something about ideas, like I don't care about your idea, or act on it, or something like that. And that's all it's all about. <clears throat> yeah, for real, execution is key. There you go. And it wasn't until I pulled that trigger, dude. There was that 
my life literally changed for I'm myself. surprised the trigger was still standing up because 10 months later, man. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm surprised too, dude. Dude, I mean, it, it, I, I, knew, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that it was, it was something I wanted to do. It was all about convincing myself that I was able to do it. Good. And capable. Yeah. And you did it. And I did, whether I was capable or not. And that was, that was, I think that's the biggest key there for me was I did it whether people thought I was able to do it or not. When they looked like, what is this thing? Mm -hmm. Cute. <laughs> the beginning stages. No beginning one, stages. No one, everyone yeah. knocks on it. The foundation. <clears throat> just yeah. like building a house. Yeah, man. You're building a uh, reputation and credibility. Yeah. You know? And I've always, you know, being, being, being an engineer during the day and just um going to like leadership stuff like courses and stuff like that teaching you how to be a leader um i learned about reputation mm -hmm. you know you can people spend a lifetime building their reputation but a reputation can fall in seconds yep absolutely literal seconds yeah so just just keep doing what you need to do to improve yourself not based off of what someone wants you to do um and you'll go a long way you'll find and not not money success but you'll find satisfaction in why you're living this life mm -hmm. you gotta enjoy the journey yeah happiness is the journey <clears throat> man yeah and, we can, and, and it'll never happy uh, happiness will never be the main part of the journey and i think happiness will only come in spurts mm. because you will it, it'll help you appreciate what happiness is when it does come because if you're always happy all the time I tell these guys all the time dude if i was always happy all the time you'd probably get annoyed of me dude <laughs> <laughs> like why the fuck are you smiling today <laughs> there is nothing to smile about <laughs> oh, i'm just yeah. i'm just happy man i'm just a really jolly guy people <laughs> might disagree with me but i just i guess that's just something that i formulated uh -huh. over the years you know which is fine yeah good man this is awesome yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad i'm glad you agreed to do this and no problem I'm, thanks for I'll having me i'll be so happy to have you back on the show dude totally yeah we or can better talk. yeah i might have you come speak to our youth <laughs> oh man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i appreciate that man that would be cool i've never done anything like that really yeah yeah all right so. we'll make it happen okay yeah because i have a uh, geo wing coming to speak and i got a couple other speakers that's gonna come speak for the clinic so i'm, I'm game i'm game yeah. yeah awesome cool thanks for having me guys jimmy Yi, everybody Thank you for joining us on another podcast episode. As always, you know I love you. Brian, Matt, they love you guys too. They just can't say it. Tell them you love them, Matt. Brian, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Jimmy E on the podcast, Master Random. Peace out, everybody. Dang, that time flies. It's flies, Holy bro. Cow, dude. Flies.